Good morning. I'm Frankie. Hope you're having a great morning. You know, we've never looked into Daniel Robinson on this channel, so I thought maybe it's time. He's been gone for quite a while, so I thought we might take a little bit of a dive in there. His dad posted this morning, I miss, I miss, I miss my son. It's the most heartbreaking thing, like, I'm glad I've never had to experience it. I pray I never ever do. Same thing with all of my loved ones and you guys. It's no good. It's no good for anybody. So I did look at the stats in 2020. There was over 90,000 missing people. And that's according to the National Crime Information Center. You can find that with a real simple Google search. So Daniel Cornelius Robert Robinson was born on January 14th, 1997 to parents David Robinson II and Melissa Edmonds. He had twin sisters, Leticia and Devisha, I hope I'm saying that properly, and an older brother, David, and a younger sister, Talia. They were extremely close, they still are, Daniel has been described as outgoing, adventurous, someone who enjoyed the company of his friends. He's also been described as funny, with lots of energy and a great spirit. Self-confidence goes along with that outgoing personality he uh, has. We um, have heard that he really liked to look at the bright side of things and not get too down. So Daniel is about five foot eight and 165, <clears throat> excuse me, 165 pounds, African American, brown hair, brown eyes. So in 2015, Daniel graduated from AC Flora High School in Columbia, South Carolina. He went to college, um, to the College of Charleston. He played a few different musical instruments and football, actually joined a fraternity. In 2019, Daniel graduated from college with a major in geology. He ended up moving to Tempe, Arizona and was employed as a hydrogeologist for Matrix New World Engineering. So this was Daniel's first job. He loved it. He often got to travel long, dis uh, long distances. You know, got to see a lot of different remote sites. So on the morning of June 23rd, 2021, so this past summer, Daniel drove to a well site for about 9 a.m. Ken Elliott, a worker, was meeting Daniel for the first time. He showed up a little bit after Daniel did. So they didn't end up staying too, too long. It started to rain and was going to interfere with their work for the day. So Daniel did call it a day. And that was probably around 9.15, 9.30, somewhere in there. So this well site was near Sun Valley Parkway and Cactus Road. So this was Daniel's, actually his second job of the day. So he jumped into it, well, putzed around a little bit, tidied up his Jeep and uh, head out. But the tracks from his vehicle were suggesting that he took like a left where he should have taken a right and this was actually, it was his uh, co-worker, Ken, that had seen these tracks and, you know, he got a little bit concerned about it. Um, this was pretty much the last time anybody seen or heard from Daniel. One strange thing that I thought should be mentioned is Ken I think his last name's Elliot. 
he actually, from what I've heard, uh, contacted Daniel's employer and said that he was sick and might not be there that day. Speculation, total speculation, I'm not sure. But um, that sounds a little bit odd to me. So Daniel never did return home, and he's never been heard of since. Later that day, Daniel was reported missing to the Buckeye Police Department when his family, family and friends couldn't contact him. It was very unusual. Usually he was, you know, quite active with his friends and his communications. So later, I think it was the fall, well, June 24th, the police finally <clears throat> went to Daniel's, knocked on the door, left. They went back around the 7th of July and finally went inside the home. I'm not quite sure. I've never really heard if they found anything or not. I'm assuming not, actually. So on July 19th, 2021, so again, past summer, Daniel's 2017 blue gray Jeep Renegade license plate two or sorry NLA two CMA was found in a fairly remote part of the desert by a rancher. It was about two and a half miles southwest of the job site. The odd thing about the fact that his Jeep was found there is that area had been searched, planes had gone over, I don't really understand how that was missed. The uh, rancher actually said he didn't think it had been there that long because his cows hadn't started circling it. They liked to lick and yeah, they would have been very attracted to that. The car was found rolled over on its side, sorry lipstick. In, on the side of the ravine, the airbags were deployed, so that is suggestive of somebody being in the driver's seat and wearing the seatbelt. His cell phone, keys, wallet, work clothes were all found probably about three feet away from where the Jeep was actually found. One red wing boot, size 11 and a half, Daniel's size, was found with a pile of clothing and the other boot somehow ended underneath the Jeep. So I'm not sure about that. I don't... Pretty hard to get there if Daniel's driving, right? The Buckeye Police Department searched a little bit over 70 square miles around the area that Daniel's Jeep was found. They used UTVs, they used cadaver dogs, drones, helicopters, but they only searched three times and basically i think it's like a cop out you know but he, they basically said daniel's an adult and he could be missing if he chooses personal opinion i don't think that daniel was the kind to do that to take off from his family not give them any kind of notification not say anything to his friends i don't know three times. That's it. Sorry. So Daniel's father, David, he's former military. He basically moved to Arizona to start his own searches. He drove over 2,000 miles and actually is still in Arizona today searching for his son. He started a GoFundMe. He started a web page, he gathered up all the searchers. He's done an awesome job of organizing the search for Daniel. Like One thing that David and David Jr. have both said <clears throat> is it's hurtful to see how Gabby Petito got all of that attention. Everyone was looking for them. Everybody was checking their cameras. I mean, you guys seen it. And sadly, Daniel's not getting the same type of attention. His dad's got to fight to the nail to get any kind of information out. It's totally sad. But they both said that they are happy for 
the Petito family that they were able to find Gabby and bring her home. So they did find several other human bones on this search. They actually found a skull that was sent away for testing. I haven't heard anything about that. But uh, they also have been sent in other bones that the searchers are pretty much convinced have been human bones, but when they hand them in, they're just told that it's animal bones. So according to the accident reconstructionist and a private investigator hired by Daniel's family, the car's black box showed that the vehicle was traveling under 30 miles per hour before the egg bags popped. The PI, his name's Jeff McGrath, David, Daniel's father, said he believes someone other than Daniel was driving the Jeep and that there's a possibility that Daniel ran into some kind of bad guy. So red, red paint was found transferred on the right side of the Jeep and there's literally no red paint anywhere in the area. His family believes that the vehicle crash was staged and foul play was involved. So before Daniel disappeared, he supposedly told somebody that he was in love with this woman named Caitlin, that he had met on a second job for, I think the place is called Instacart. It's a grocery deliver, delivery and pickup service. So he's working two jobs. During one delivery, the ex they exchanged phone numbers and actually Caitlin and her friend invited him in and later messages showed that maybe Daniel showed up at her home unannounced a few times. I've not seen these mess uh, messages so again the speculation warning. According to some of Daniel's friends they say that maybe he was behaving oddly before his disappearance but Daniel's dad doesn't put much weight into this information based on the fact that these people really don't know Daniel. You know, his family know Daniel. Having to remember, he'd only been in that area for a couple of years, so no one knew him truly very well. <sighs> it's, it's, like, it's heartbreaking. This morning when I seen his dad's post, oh my God, just grabbed my heart and yanked, like, you can't help but suffer with him. You, I mean, if I was in the U.S., I'd be there. You know, he does need help. So if there's anybody out there that's got the time, help him. Please help this man. It's the weekend. Take the time. I would drive a good many hours to help somebody that was hurting that bad. So Ellie says they have found no evidence that foul play was involved. They've also said that the investigation is still open and active. There's basically no leads. The family is offering $10,000 reward. And uh, still the disappearance and it, everything remain, remains unclear at this point missing and unsolved, not missing and endangered, not, I don't know, like, it just seems to me that they've, they've dropped the ball on this guy. So it, please try and get the word out, that this video, other videos, it doesn't matter. Pass on his posts, whatever you can do. And if you do know something, come on now. So if you've got any information regarding Daniel's disappearance, contact the Buckeye Police. They're at 623-349-6400. Now you can also look on 
the webpage finddaniel.com. No, yeah, finddanielrobertson.com. And that page there has pretty much everything that you need to know about the searches and possibly what you can do to help. So, on that note, I'm going to thank you for being here with me. I've been looking at this case for a while. I just didn't know when was the appropriate time for me to try and say something. This seems to be the time he needs help. So, thank you again for being here with me. I appreciate you. Um, if you've enjoyed the content, please give me a thumbs up. They're really important to the YouTube algorithm, as I'm sure you guys know. I would love some new members. Let's start getting on this. I appreciate you, and I do look forward to seeing you in the next one. Cheers.